took advantage of the fact that 12 years ago, you know, we saw these t these high def televisions that cost twenty thousand dollars, and everybody said they're too expensive. I said no, they're just like a PC; they'll follow that same price performance curve. They'll take off at some point. Now I screwed up in that they took off faster than I expected them to, and I got caught that HDNet high def wasn't enough anymore. So we um, rebranded to Access TV for all the reasons I just mentioned. That I think that there's such a transition right now to television as being the starting point for social conversations. We wanted to be there, and how do you be there, and, and what is the greatest instigator for social conversation? Live events, hence access, AXS.TV, access to live events, in particular music concerts and other live events, so because it starts the conversation. They're working on possible partnership with Live Nation right now, they're talking. We're already partnered with AG, we're talking to Live Nation, Ryan Seacrest, not on air, but um, as a creative partner, as an equity partner, we're talking to other folks. I mean, it's just- Direct Dish, CAA, all in this. All, all, yeah, Direct Dish aren't equity partners, they're, they're um, distribution partners, right. as our Verizon chart, charter, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody's like Time Warner, Cox, and Cablevision, so please call them, email them, well, can and tell them. can we talk about that? Because so I was at home trying to watch, and I can't, because I live in New York City and I have Time Warner Cable. Sure. Big challenge there is getting on. No question. Look, look, everybody knows right now, they saw what happened with Ovation, it's tough to be an independent network. You know, it, it's, it's not easy. We can't go in there and say, look, in order to get, you know, uh, this big network, MTV, you got to take all these crappy little networks. I don't have any big networks and I don't have any crappy little networks to make up the money on and so I'm stuck. Um, but that goes back, you were talking about cable networks. One of the reasons we went to live, 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 you know, our, our tagline at Access TV is live live. Live, 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 live. And one of the reasons is because I think social interaction around TV is going to get so much bigger than it is now. Remember, not even 30% of, of the U.S. population is on Twitter. And, and while they're on Facebook, even a smaller percentage, or Pinterest or any other, you know, um, Tumblr, whatever, even a smaller percentage are actively using it um, real time with, with, with media. So those numbers are only going to grow. And so all those folks who, you know, after they graduated from school, didn't have a job, moved in with their folks, then all of a sudden got a job and weren't used to having cable, those were the cable networks. They moved into an apartment with 18 friends and decided not to spend money on cable. Well, by going in the programming direction that we did, not only do we think that we're gonna have a unique solution um, to start the conversation with social media, but we think we're gonna be a solution for, for cable nevers because if you wanna watch that Tiesto concert or the Skrillex concert live on Access TV or the Jay-Z concert, whatever it is live on Access TV, you gotta get cable. And if you want to be part of the conversation that all your friends with cable are part of on Twitter, Facebook, whatever social media, right, you've got to have cable. And so much like we, we saw kind of the future with HDNet, with high definition television, we really think, I'm, I'm positive, I'm not even, you know, I don't have even a little bit of doubt that television is going to be the launching point for social media for the cable nevers, and to be part of that conversation, you'll have to have TV. And again, by the time it's online, even stream live stuff, it's too late. But there is so much money being funneled right now into over-the-top, basically, technology. So something we were just talking about, you said, oh, it, you know, it's not, it's not worth it. Aereo, Barry Diller putting money into Aereo, for example. There's a lot of these out there that are getting millions and millions. That has got 38 million in, in Series B funding. It's expanding to 22 cities, and you, and you you're not a believer. I mean, the guys at Arrow are smart. I mean, super that's smart. The whole, them right. and, the, and the rest of it. Well, over the top, look, like I just said, who had, whose wireless works? You know, we used to talk about the last mile. Now we got to talk about where's the microwave in your apartment, you know? Or where's, where are things set up? You know, how, do you, how is your router configured? Okay, but let's say we get over that technology barrier. How are you going to get over it? I don't, I'm not the one who fixes it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, let's say we do, right? Again, look, the wireless isn't new, right? It'll get better, it'll get faster, it'll get this, it'll get that, right? And people are, are going to be very tolerant. Just like, you know, I was wrong in HD where I thought people actually wanted to get a high definition signal. Yeah. And just, you know, if it was on an HD channel, even though it was standard definition, it looks worse on HD, people didn't care because they thought they were getting HD. So, you know, people are willing to accept less quality. But at the same time, you know, we are so internet centric in everything that we do over the past 20, almost 20 years, people just assume that a solution is going to come from the internet. When in reality, it's, it's a race because the technology is the same. 
you're, you're, the way Time Warner or Charter or Verizon or whatever delivers video online is just a control network versus an open net, network. There, but they use all the same stuff, basically. And so there's not, you know, trying to go over the top because you create more networks and you create more choice, that's great. But when you have unlimited choice, you also have unlimited expense to try to have your content come to the front. And like I said earlier, we can put something on in the middle of the night on Access TV and get 100,000 views over the course of a show, right? Which I if would you, die for. You would die for 100, video. Yeah, you yeah. would die for that, right? And then you look at what you, look, YouTube's a great country, company, country. They're doing a lot of great things. Their automated content recognition stuff is amazing. But in, in reality, they're no different than any other gatekeeper slash network. You know, they just cut Reuters, they cut some other news outlets that were, you know, they cut 60%. How's that any different than any programming exec at a network? You know, there's a reason why YouTube had to spend all that money to get content. Because they don't know what's going to work. What about mobile, though? Mobile's great, you know, but what about it? I mean, look, the reason you watch new mobile is because that's your only access to it. Right. And until there's a whole lot more spectrum to do a whole lot more with, or a lot more, a lot better radio technology, or actually there's some unique radio technologies coming, but they have to go a lot further. You know, you, what are you going to do? But I want to push you on that because sh sharing, uh -huh. I can't share from my television set to your television set. If something really stands out to me from CNN that we've streamed online and I want to share it, I'm going to share it. Great. Mobily. But you know what? You just hit the nail on the head. You're going to share it mobily while you're watching television, right? One is the instigator. One is a fulfillment. And so this guy is your second screen. And everybody wants to talk about these great second screen apps. Look what this guy's doing. Look what this guy's doing. Twitter, email, texting, Snapchat, whatever. Everything works already. There's a zillion second screen apps that are competing for your attention, and they already work. They're already. You always have to remember what the definition of television is. And I think some of the over-the-top guys forget this. The definition of television is the best alternative to boredom. <laughs> Facebook is not that? Facebook is really close, right? Facebook is, def I mean, and I've said that. Facebook is just the ultimate time killer. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. It used to be you'd walk into, if you're going on a sales call or a meeting, whatever, you'd walk in and there'd be a receptionist and she'd be playing solitaire. Now she's on Facebook. Right? It used to be, you know, you're laying in bed. Now you're doing your Facebook while the TV's on, right? Or while Pandora's on, whatever else is on. It's a great time killer. But when you make somebody work to get their television, that's what doesn't work. And I think it's a function of age, too. A lot of people look at kids and they say, well, my, my eight-year-old likes to use um, Netflix or likes to use whatever, Amazon Prime, or likes to go to YouTube. You know, my three-year-old loves, has this Superman and Power Ranger search. But the things that kids do are more a function of time. They're not going to be a reflection of what adults do. You don't, you don't live in the world you were born into. Things are going to change. And so I, I, I don't see the argument that because this is what kids are doing, 12 to 16, 12 to 18 year old kids are going to always be on YouTube because they got a lot of time to kill. When you come home from work, like I said, you're checking your email, you're texting, you're watching Access TV, you're checking out the concert, you're hitting the flash tag, whatever, got a hashtag. But you know, you're not going to want to work. And I think that's the thing that over the top is missing. Uh, just heads up, clock's not working, which means I'm going to go on forever and ever. But just give me a high five when, uh, give me a heads up when we need to get to, to Q&A. Like <laughs> I know. Um, is there a political agenda to access? Because I was reading that you acquired this documentary, Frack Nation, which right. is really the antithesis of Gasland. Right. Um, and I wonder, as, as you form this content, you want to make it things that people are going to, to tweet about, that they're sure. going to talk about. Is there a political agenda, or is it just something that's no. going to get people talking? You look at it. Frack Nation did great for us, and it created a lot of conversation, which I love. It created online awareness um, and activity. And if there is an, you know, a, a corollary documentary that was new, that we had the rights to, I'd show them side by side. You know, there's nothing I would love better than to piss everybody off, you know, or piss half the audience off and get them arguing online with the other half. You know, um, it, piss them off and get them talking. Get them talking. That's that's what access is all about. I want to talk about Apple. Um, so in in Walter Isaacson's uh, book uh, on Steve Jobs, he quotes Jobs as saying. Um, I'd like to create an integrated television set that is completely easy to use. It would be seamlessly synced with all of your devices and with iCloud. It would have the simplest user interface you could imagine. I finally cracked it. 
We want to know what he cracked, and we may we may soon know. But you think it may be too late? Do you think Apple can win in that game like they, frankly, you know, have uh, with 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 smartphones? You can do all those things now. It's just convoluted. Um, the key is, and I'll, I'll, I'll pimp one of my companies here, Mobile, M O V L dot com. The problem with um, smart TV right now is that you have to do too much work. It's like it's like back in the day to get the stop the blinking 12 on your VCR, it was too much work, so you just let it blink all the time, right? And so now on the smart TV, you gotta go to the internet button, you gotta go to the apps, you gotta wait for the app to download, you gotta use your remote, your TV remote to log in everything, and other than doing it for maybe Netflix, Amazon Prime, or maybe one other video app where you, that you think you'll use a lot, you're not gonna go through the hassle. So what Movo does is they created a middleware that we licensed to the TV uh, manufacturers that makes it so you don't have to go to the internet button. You don't have to go to the apps. There's a middleware already preloaded. So when you just download an app on your TV, the TV recognizes it. You put in a number to connect to your TV, and you can play games immediately by yourself. You can walk into a Best Buy or any TV retailer to play games, and you can play games against your friends. And so to me, the, the, the step that would be to crack the, the TV code for apps would be to take away the step where you had to load, download, and then load, and then initiate an app on TV. It should already be there like it is on um, a PC. I know you know Tim Cook not well, but do you have any sense of, of whether Apple can lead in this space like they have with smartphones? I mean, they don't have the majority of the smartphone market, but, but if you ask many people you know, who they think did best, phones are still going to say an iPhone, even though they don't, don't have Hey, I've, I've got a Samsung Android. here with the extra battery. Right. My backup phone was an iPhone 5, and I trashed it for a Windows phone, right? Because I like Windows better than iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that just the history of Apple's technology and all technology companies is they're hot, they're hip, they're cool, and then they're not. And then they go through a refresh period, and, they, and if they're able to refresh, then they do it. So there's a lot of questions about Apple right now. After their earnings, what quick take on Apple right now? I mean, Apple's a great company. There, there's no doubt about it. They make a, a shitload of money, and they're going to continue to for a while. Even when they were in their down days, for the most part, you know, unless you go back to the age, they were making a lot of money. But in terms of what's new, hip, cool, if, if your parents are using it, it's not going to be cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> because everybody talks about a la carte from a consumer perspective, but there's a lot of a la carte media industries out there already. DVD business was already a la carte, just pick whatever you wanted. You know, the music industry, we could you know, record our own version of Gagan style by just holding up this phone and then we could release it online and have all the access to billions of people on the internet, right? But that's not the hard part. The hard part is marketing and gaining an audience in one place at one time. And so, you know, Packaging, um, bundling, whatever you want to call it, for the consumer, I don't think is going to go away because if you make it a la carte, it's going to be so expensive for every network, it would kill television. It, it, would, it would just destroy television and it, it becomes a very difficult business. And so while it's expensive and while we all complain about the price of cable, um, it's... It's just going it, to get more expensive. Well, it always does, right? Everything does. Whether you're going to the movies, whether it's music, whether whatever, um, it gets more expensive, but what you'll see is people like bundles. People don't want to have to work for their entertainment. That's what it comes down to. And you'll pay a premium because it saves you time. If we always have to go through and pick every show, like I said, it's defeating the purpose of television, which is the best alternative to work. What is the most relevant network out there right now? Not one that you own or invest in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any one network that, that is doing anything better, but you're seeing a trend towards live. You know, and, and there's a very good reason for that because people are also starting to recognize the impact of social media. You know, when I went on Shark Tank as a guest shark three years ago now, um, I just decided I was going to tweet during the show. I never watched Shark Tank in advance before they aired. Um, and so they send us a link if we want to watch online, but I never do. I want that freshness and newness of watching on TV. So when I tweet, it's brand new. And I started tweeting, all of a sudden, we're trending. 
And all of a sudden, ratings started going up. The other sharks started to ratings started going up some more. And we've been, been up you know, 30% over last year, which is unheard of. We've been up each of the last three seasons, which is unheard of. And we repeat well. I mean, every episode is played 97 times, and it draws 80% of the audience. I say I'm interviewing Mark Cuban, and people say Shark Tank. They it's, think he's accomplished a lot more. But that, I mean, that's It's crazy. One no one talks to me about basketball anymore. They want to talk about Shark Tank. And no, I don't want to hear your ideas. Um, <laughs> ABC.com will apply. Um, but the point is, in terms of network relevancy, live, Matt, what's happening now to start the conversation yeah. matters. That drives, drives viewership. That, in turn, drives more conversation. And it's a, it's a, a virtuous circle. Yeah. And so you, whether it's Bravo, whether it's you know, awards on the, the broadcast networks, whether it's all these new live events that are being created, or sports, for that matter. You know, people look at, at, at sports centers and say, oh, it's, you know, look how expensive it is from a, a ESPN to the MSO uh, perspective. But look, it, it doesn't get a huge audience every time, but it drives so much conversation. And it, it also is, is applicable to the cable networks, right? You know, you go, you go by a fraternity house and talk to kids. They've got a big screen TV, even though, you know, 18 to 22, and they want to check out sports centers. So I want to talk about Facebook uh -huh. because um, you did this AMA on, on Reddit.com not that long ago, and you said, I think Facebook is going to have some challenges going forward. I want to know precisely what concerns you, because you pulled back from Facebook in terms of your ventures like access. Right. Well, there's, there's two elements there. One is Facebook, the company, and what they're doing. And I think you know, when they went public, that changed the dynamics of Facebook, because it does for any company. So they had to put a completely different focus on revenue. Mm -hmm. And I don't think all the... The things they did to generate revenue, I think, were short-term gain, long-term pain. You know, they're starting to get into the value of Facebook, like, which we keep up with friends, families, but it's also a great time killer. I mean, Facebook's a better competitor to TV than YouTube is, in my opinion. You know, um, for, for anyone over 22, because it's a, again, what's the definition of television? It's a time killer. What's Facebook? It's a time killer. So I think they're getting so intrusive in, in their goal, in their um, charge to raise revenue. But that said, I, you know, when the stock was, I, I traded at 26 and lost money. I sold puts when it hit 18 and made money. And I started trading it again when it hit 29, um, hoping that this um, earnings call, and again, trading, not investing, huge difference. If you've got to recognize the difference. Trading, not a long-term Maverick blog, 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 blog Maverick. Blog Maverick.com, yeah. yeah. But, so I said, okay, I think they're doing so much for revenue, that's a good thing in the short term, but you know, I, I'm a bigger believer in Amazon type approach where you, you do your business, you grind it out, and you look at the longer term, and I don't think Facebook is. And there has been a lot of talk recently about a quote unquote search war between Google and Facebook and what Facebook is doing expanding in search and social search, but you've said Facebook is far more like television than it is Google search. You know, Google is a verb, right? We Google things, right? Facebook is, is a proximity search. You're there. You might as well search. You might as well look. And I think it'll be interesting to see whether there's a social graph search, what kind of impact it has on people's behavior. I think it was smart from the perspective of, if you go back to the roots of Facebook, why did kids sign up initially? Because they wanted to see the hot girls. They wanted to see the hot guys. Now you can do a, a, you know, a social graph search and find out you know, your little salacious pleasures on things that you search for. And, and so it'll be interesting to see, you know, after its initial surge where people are curious about it and curious about what it returns, how much it'll, how much it'll work for people from a functionality perspective. The bigger question here is can Facebook or can anything become a sandbox that keeps you in it for everything online? Can it be your sandbox for Facebook, for search, for watching video? Can that exist? Sure, can it exist. Um, Will it exist with, with Facebook? That's ultimately what I think they're chance, trying to do they, here. They've got to keep on reiterating, right? You've got to iterate, iterate, and find the right solution. But again, I don't think it's going to be, look, the, the desktop PC is dead, right? It's gone. And no one's, no one's excited to get their new desktop PC anymore. Those days are over. Maybe if you know if there's a new laptop that comes out, it's cool. But now we're, we work with our phones, yeah. and the biggest limitation on our phones right now, and one of the reasons second screen apps don't really work, is that your phone's single tasking, right? And it, it's stateless, meaning that other than Twitter and your email and texting or whatever, once you leave an app on your phone, huh. when you come back, you're not in the same place. You basically have to start over on most apps, and so Facebook 
is has that difficulty because when people are trying, so many people or more people are using on their phone and on their mobile device that they've got to be able to keep their state while people go to other things. Now, when people when phones start becoming more powerful and multitask, if and when things will change and it'll be a different environment and you know those applications will have to evolve. But as long as these phones are single tasking and, and stateless, then it's gonna be a real challenge to be the end all be all for, for Facebook. One of the things that's interesting about Mark is if you email him, he will email you back. No, I will read it. He will read, read it, yeah. he will always read it, and if you're lucky, he'll email you back. But people literally send him ideas and he has invested money in companies, a lot of money, without meeting them, with just reading it. So what I wanna know from you is, what idea or solution do you want most right now? I, you know, I try not to, to predefine what I'm looking for. I just try to keep an open mind, and we're, we're, regardless of where the idea comes from, you know, I try to look at it objectively and say, okay, what do they like about it? What am I missing, if anything? And are these the right people to implement it? And I mean, literally, like Pop said, I've invested $5 million, give or take, in people that if they were here in the room right now, anybody here in the room I've invested in and haven't met yet? No. Right there, <laughs> the front. Seriously? Or not yet? Chance. <laughs> What's that? Chance. Okay. There you go. Um, we talked. We didn't do anything, but we talked about some stuff, and all via email. And so, um, you know, there's a company, um, uh, Motionlock.com, which if I got offered a billion dollars for it, I wouldn't sell. What does it do? Um, they do real-time sensors for inside and outside of buildings. So something, it's a little bit bigger than this, this generation, but it'll be this size. You put it on the outside of a building, and anything that goes in front of it, cars, pedestrians, bikes, it counts in real time. And so now, if you're in New York, the real estate business is changing, or any big market, the real estate business is changing, because now you put up a motion loft sensor, and it'll, it, on an empty um, retail site, and it'll tell you exactly how many people go by. You know, a bunch of huge retailers, Macy's and, and others, are now putting these up on their retail locations to determine what the best time is to open and close. Because that data is so... Yeah. And they hadn't been able to capture it before. They used to hire students and homeless people to sit with a clicker once every five years. <laughs> then they, seriously, they would continue. Yeah, them. and they click, right? Now, we, you know in real time. So as traffic moves through a shopping center or through, a, you know, um, we, you put them on the side of bridges and they want to know the exact traffic when the weather starts to be bad so they'll know where the most traffic is so they'll know where to send the trucks first. One more question, then I want to open it up for Q&A. So if you have a question, raise your hand and let's bring the mic around to you, if we have a portable mic. Um, uh, do you think the government has had a positive role, the U.S. government, in advancing technology, or have they stifled our competitiveness? They haven't stifled our competitiveness, because who the hell cares what they do? Um, <laughs> um, literally, I've never met, an, I've, I've invested in 70 companies, and we never have once had a conversation about, well, the economy's slowing down, and so, or here comes the fiscal cliff, you know? <laughs> you know, and I was say, what I did tell them was, if you hear anybody talking about the fiscal cliff, let me know how we can compete, because while they're worried about the fiscal cliff, I want to kick their ass and take their business, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, that doesn't mean the, the government's great at, at much of anything. Well, visas is an issue by keeping some of the brightest sure. minds in this country. And you know, if there's a lot of things that are extraneous that can negatively impact the company, right? If you can't get enough workers, um, education aspects of it, funding. There's there's a lot of things that you know I would I like to see better, but there's always going to be those things. There's never been a moment in time in the history of this country um, since the business of the United States was business where there hasn't been a problem or an issue that you could raise with government. But so what? You know, you can, you're always going to be able to point to it, and I just hope everybody that I compete with pays a whole lot of attention to it, because there's nothing they can do. You know, and I, there's not nothing they can do about it. There, there are things that we can do as citizens, and we should do, and that we should take the initiative. Because if there's something you don't like in the way the government's doing things, you get off your ass and do something. You're right, but don't bitch. And unless you're competing with me, then please bitch all you want. <laughs> Let's open it up for questions. Who has the microphone? Anyone? Uh, Mike, can you just hand it, this right here in the third row back, this woman right here, and just say your name if you don't mind and where you're from. Hi, Liana Bonamici, CD Studios Entertainment, Palm Springs, California, content creators, producers. Thank you very much. You um, uh, solidified something for us with because we have a show on uh, traditional television, and we're expanding that into the mobile uh, world and social. 
Um, thank Just you. Just be careful, though. You don't want to necessarily expand your show into mobile and social. You want your show to drive mobile and social activities. Yes, correct. That's the goal. Um, my question is about the company you talked about, MOVL, right. um, which that sounds to me like that's something we might be able to build in, because we are in the process of building our app right now. Is that something we can build into our sure. app, and what are the benefits to us for that? Look, I, I don't want to get into a whole in-depth conversation. Just go to um, mobile, mobl.com. They have the, this whole middleware um, environment that allows you to do second screens. But I, I will tell you that their, their biggest benefit is they're always on platform so that television apps become the path of least resistance with mobile devices. and their multi-home path of least resistance. Um, but I, I don't encourage anybody to go out there and try to create the traditional second screen apps. You know, where you synchronize this to that, you know. There's already a ton of second screen apps and people do not want to turn off their Twitter or go away from their texting or email or Facebook to load up another app and start get, because it's single tasking, when you have a second screen app other than the ones I mentioned, you've got to dedicate your phone to that. Yeah, and you don't want to dedicate your phone because your best friend, your BFF, just might text you. <laughs> Can't miss that, right? And yeah, you get an alert, but you, you get my uh, Next question right here, straight back in the middle. Yes, uh, hi Mark. Uh, Ralph Tobias from BYU TV in Provo, Utah. Hi Ralph. Uh, everybody knows content is king, and for the longest time, TV, you know, is where you got your content. Now, of course, we have YouTube and all these channels online where you get the content. One of the challenges for us as broadcasters is, with us, they're watching our playlist. One of the benefits that, like, YouTube offers is people can create their own playlist. They don't have to wait until four to see, you know, their favorite show. They can sure. watch. How do you see... What are your thoughts about that and how we as broadcasters can kind of compete with that? It just depends whether or not you have confidence that people will watch your show or not. You know, because everybody wants to squeeze that little bit of audience and make sure that, okay, if I miss the, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir at 3 o'clock on BYU television, I can catch it online. Well, if you allow them to catch it online, there's no urgency. And if you allow them to catch it online, there's, no, there's less conversation. Maybe don't put it online. Why? Now I think with the, like if you're CNN and your your um, your sales force, you've already missed them. Well, you, if you're CNN and your sales force says I've got buyers for video views, yeah. BYU Television isn't selling advertising in front of the the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, right? On on I don't think so, anyways. Um, but if, so they're they're groveling for views to sell an ad, which is fine, right? And if you're a big conglomerate, every view is a good view, right? But if, if you're smaller in particular and you want to drive conversation. Why? Why would you put it online? Now, would people, we make the same mistake as newspapers make going online? No, I mean newspaper, all, newspapers. Newspapers completely different. Completely different. One is physical format. Both in this case, both are digital, right? right? And rather than putting it on YouTube, why won't you go to Time Warner? Now, forget Time Warner. Why won't you go to Verizon? You know, AT and T, whoever, <laughs> Charter, and say, look, let me put it on your VOD. There's, look, the views on VOD are growing faster than views on YouTube. Now, YouTube changed their formulas so that it impacts, but the number of views on YouTube is falling. The number of minutes is staying solid, right? But I'll give you another fun fact. Kid, man, 18 to 24, I forget, or 26, whatever the number was that they did in the survey, spent more time watching television, going through programming guides, than they do online on YouTube. Think about that. Right, so while we like to think that's the end all be all, and in aggregate it's enormous and amazing, right? So I don't want to take anything away from YouTube, but if you want to if you want to initiate conversation and social media and engaging people is your goal, then you want to point them to be there. And if you have to put it where it's easily accessed, put it on VOD for authenticated users because you're also supporting your distributors. Next question, right here, sir. White. Morning. 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 Name is Israel Valdez with the Rockbox Network. You probably see my email come across you quite a few times, and your brother James as well. Um, I don't have a brother named James. <laughs> young James Cuban, brother cousin no, from Access TV. But anyway, yeah. Jeff, um, Jeff. Yeah. She was talking about she was talking about the whole sandbox thing. Uh -huh. And I actually built that network seven years ago uh, when they said it couldn't be built, which I built a the first online global interactive television network. 
Yeah. No, no, well, not the way I did it. Okay. Uh, I did because I researched it and patented it. Okay. Um, well, patent, they actually, don't get me started on patents. Right? <laughs> which I understand because they keep giving me crap about it. No, no, but, I don't, they don't give me crap about it. It's just the dumbass, most dumbass shit we've ever seen. Yeah, but well, unfortunately talk, I had to do it. But you know, I'm just saying, the government impacting growth, nothing compared to the impact on growth and investment in technology that patents is having. More money is wasting defending bullshit patents. Right. You know, or Believe me, I know. I mean, it's ridiculous. I've spent that on Greenberg's work for a while. Question. But, Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But the question is, and this is, again, this is not a, 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 a Shark Tank right. pitch or anything, but if you had the solution or you still, right. if, I, if I could show you, you could see the solution. We're not an online global IP well, the, 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 No, it's a little bit different. It's built on an advertising platform. You could actually watch TV, surf the web, and do everything else at the same time. Um, and actually, when I did my beta, well, hold on, hold on. But when I did my beta launch, I had a two hour and forty seconds. Send me an email, marketaccess.com. I did. I sent it to you and to James and everybody else. Okay. And then your, my response speaks volumes. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, next question. We have time for two more quick questions. Woman right here and then right there. Okay, the last question. Hi, Mark. Hi. Okay, I'm going to be real. I'm from the older generation. <laughs> and everything is moving so fast. By the time I learn one thing, my kids, my production staff are 25 and younger. And they don't have time to, you know, sit there and tell me, because they go so fast. So I'm like, okay, you know, download me, upload me, do this, do that. I'm like, I like, what's going on? It's like, I can't, I learn one thing and then, then the next day there's something new. So I'm like, where is there a place for the elders to learn how all of this is working? Because it's like, I'm like, okay. There's new technology coming out every day, right? Everybody sees the same new shit every day except the person who invented it, right? And so it's completely up to you to say, okay, if, I, if it's important enough for my business or for me personally to keep up with the technology, just read. That's how everybody else keeps up. So do what I do. Take your laptop into the John. Go to the right website. <laughs> uh, 